What's up guys, welcome back to part 3 of the Logitech G920 vs TSXW review. I've held off for about a week from doing this review because I didn't want to jump in too early to talk about the differences. Um, sometimes I have a tendency to be a little short on things because other times I over explain and I lose people. Ultimately I've decided, if you guys are watching this video, you're probably interested in the comparison. You're probably interested in what I have to say. So I want to make sure I cover some details. Um, first thing I want to address in the other videos, I was comparing the two wheels using Forza. Uh, in doing that, I feel like I kind of did a disservice. As much as I love Forza, I play with my friends. Um, it's a fun, more arcade style game. Uh, and as I've gotten back into sim racing, uh, first time doing it on a computer, never done sim racing on an Xbox. So I have quickly learned that that was not the proper way to test those. Uh, and today I'm not going to show you guys a whole lot of footage of me racing just because I want to take some time to really talk about these wheels and clarify quite a few different things about them. Uh, Next thing I want to address, the reason being new to sim racing that I'm doing these videos is because I have a tendency to jump from one thing to the next, not so much in hobbies, but in upgrading. Um, Cause I'm always looking for the next biggest thing or the next best thing. Um, I kind of get focused in on a hobby and obsess a little bit over it. So in this case, uh, with the race wheels, I feel like, or with anything I do with this sim, um, being new to it, I can compare them as a new person. Usually you get a lot of input from people who have been sim racing for a while. They already have a lot of the skills. And by far, taking their advice is not a bad thing to do, 100%. They know what they're talking about. Uh, but as somebody new to sim racing, you want to see before you make a purchase, maybe how, what it could be like for you. Maybe you could save some money up front. For example, uh, buying a more expensive race wheel when you know you're going to want to upgrade quickly and not having to spend the money twice. Uh, so that's my second point that I want to make. The third reason I chose to upgrade so quickly is uh, I did have the G29 the first time I built a simulator. I Again, I think I've explained, if not, I'll explain again, that I was playing on the PS4, I was playing Gran Turismo Sport, and that was pretty much all I got into. I think I did a little bit of dirt racing on there. I tried Project Cars, uh, didn't get very far with it, but ultimately, I would say maybe like a couple months intermittently racing on there with the G29 before I realized that I wanted to go to a PC and the, my first simulator I built, which I made at home out of complete wood, uh, almost entirely wood with a few metal parts, was too large, too bulky, took up too much space in my house at the time I didn't have it. And I knew I wanted something different anyway, so I sold it and it took me a couple years to get into it again. So now getting into it a second time, I've upgraded my actual cars. And my current car, uh, I truly enjoy driving. I like taking it up into the hills. I like carving corners. It's just, uh, it's become a passion of mine just to drive my actual car. So when I got into sim racing again, part of that is due to there's only so far I'm willing to take my car. And I wanted to continue to have that experience without, have, without fear of damaging my baby, basically. So, uh, in doing that, getting the G29, I noticed that the wheel didn't handle the way my car did. I, I felt choppiness. It wasn't smooth. It didn't feel planted. Uh, no matter what settings I did with that wheel, I just wasn't satisfied. I wanted it to feel more like my car. Um, so, I decided to try a different wheel, and that's where the TSXW comes in. So, we'll go ahead and look at... A, a few of the specs to compare them before I jump into talking about them. Let me bring up the G920 specs. 
sorry, I edited out the last part where I called it a G29 uh, habit, old wheel, like I said. Uh, so we'll look at the G920 specs. So on the G920, we've got a wheel diameter of 10.24 inches. Uh, rotation of 900 degrees, running a uh, dual geared motor force feedback, uh, three pedal layout, and it's compatible with the driving force shifter. Um, that's pretty much the gist of what I could find in the details of the wheel. Uh, next on the TSXW, We've got a wheel diameter of 12.4, a one-to-one -one replica of a Sparco race wheel. Dual belt pulley system, rotation 1080 degrees, running on a 400, or sorry, 40 watt motor with a turbo style 40 watt power supply, which you'll see on the floor right under my headphones there, and a three pedal layout. All right, guys, congratulations. We've read the spec sheets. So how does it all translate into how we drive? Uh, so Logitech wheel. Uh, I did start out playing Forza with the Logitech wheel. I tried iRacing, uh, did a little drifting in Assetto Corsa, didn't, did a little bit of racing in Assetto Corsa. Uh, honestly, even racing overall, I, I still haven't got the hang of Assetto Corsa. Um, other than the drifting. Since getting into the TSXW and making part two of this video, I think that was the last time I drove in Forza. Uh, I almost immediately switched over. Like I said in the other video, I wanted everybody to kind of see the comparison, see my reaction to it. Probably didn't do a whole lot of justice to this wheel. Um, I did switch over to iRacing almost immediately after making that video, uh, which was something I just could not get into with the G920. I know there are people that are great with the G29, the G27. I am not saying by any means that you cannot race iRacing with a Logitech wheel. What I am saying is that it just didn't feel right for me. Um, just not having the the planted feeling, the smooth turns, uh, everything I got from the TSXW, it did not feel right with the Logitech. Um, so fast forward to a week of playing with the TSXW on iRacing. Um, I've got a lot of improving to do with it, but I have seen a lot of consistency in lap times. Um, basically, overall, uh, I feel like I've had more control of the car. I've known what was what I could expect from my races. And for the most part, I've backed off of racing others because I've got, I'm getting some lap times and things like that where I'm able to compare myself. I've still got to work on my braking. Um, I truly want to get competitive in iRacing. So before getting too deep in, I'm really trying to get my practice in. Uh, I have had some successful races in the MX-5 Cup this week. I had a back-to-back -back first and second finish. And I will contribute 99% of that to the ability to be consistent with this wheel. Uh, a few more points I want to make on it. First off, dual belt from a smoothness standpoint. In the rotation, I'm not feeling any choppiness with the right settings. I did turn it up a little too high one time. Got bumpy, got rough. I uh, Tossed me off the track. My fault, wrong setting. I'll take that. Uh, but overall, it feels amazing. Uh, transitions from one corner to the next or through one, through a corner. Uh, I can anticipate what the wheel is going to do. I'm not going to get some weird chop in there. Uh, and to be fair, part of me, I didn't remember the G29 being that way. So maybe my G920 was defective. Uh, but I do remember it, being, it having some kick to it. I do remember thinking that it was a little bit clunky, a little bit grindy. Uh, wasn't entirely happy with it. So now having gone to the TSXW, definitely satisfied with the wheel. The pedals, on the other hand, I've said it from the first drive in that wheel or on that on this wheel, the pedals are a different story. Um, 
if I, if without complications, if I could have just used the G920s for a little bit longer, I, I didn't like the brake on the G920, but I definitely liked it better than the sponginess of the pedals that I have with the Thrustmaster. So one of my next upgrades hopefully will be a load cell set of pedals for the Thrustmaster. Uh, I wanted to go with something even better, but I've spent enough and I have, a, I have some other plans that I want to address. Uh, I think I've talked about it enough, but I'll talk about it again. Uh, anyways, I have some other money I'm going to spend on this thing and I do have another hobby that I'm sure there's a few people that would like me to make another video on. So I'm not going to jump right in and do that yet. Uh, but what I do want to share with you is a couple things I learned on iRacing during this week. A uh, few things that might help you out that if you're just getting in. Like I said, I'm making these videos for people just starting out. Uh, there's a few good things to know coming out of the MX-5 Cup this week that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to show you a couple replays. I'm not going to show you whole races. I don't want to bore you. Uh, MX-5 is not super exciting. Um, I did throw up one that I actually, I enjoyed the last couple laps of. I threw up the whole video. If you guys enjoyed it, great. If you didn't, sorry, but I wanted to share it anyways. Um, so this time I'm just going to cover a few points in the videos uh, and try not to bore you too much. The first thing that I want you guys to see is this week, the first four, three or four corners of this race. Um, this is the race that I believe I came in first on, or the, I believe, I'm pretty sure it was the first place race. Um, and I want you guys to see how the cars react in the beginning and why consistency can still dominate, even if you're not the fastest racer. Uh, again, one weekend, I've pulled the first and the second place back to back on MX-5 Cup just by the con semi-consistent lap times that I've been pushing and by understanding, first of all, not to battle too hard with other rookies racing. And yeah, let's, let's take a look so you guys can see what happens here. All right, guys, so we're looking at the MX-5 Cup for this week. Uh, I want to show you the first four corners or so and what happens in those four corners and how consistency can pay off. So my number one goal with this race was to run a clean race. Uh, number two was to not get have my race messed up and end up in the pit for three minutes because I got hit by somebody else. So I'm starting out in fourth place and I'm gonna take a pretty decent drop back here. I've gone to fifth, sixth, seventh, pushing, almost getting eighth place right out the gate just to avoid crashing. I quickly jump back into seventh. Or I'm sorry, I think sixth. Two cars are taken out, and now I'm in fourth place. So I was able to run fourth place, uh, just staying consistent ahead of all the other cars for most of the race. At some point, number three just drops out of the race. Uh, no idea why that happened. And I'm running third place, pretty uncontested. And then I have this, I'm sure you guys caught the last little clip of it, but I'll show you, or here's another angle. I have this very fortunate incident take place as I'm in third place, excited to finally be getting the podium. Uh, and the two cars in front of me, I couldn't tell you what exactly happened, but I assumed that there was a battle for first place. Uh, apparently earlier in the race than I remembered. But uh, fourth lap, battle for first place. They both go off the track. And I'm able to glide right up into first place. 
look at another angle of the pass. I'm not sure why I did that, but we're going to look at it anyways. And I'm able to pretty much run the last seven laps, six and a half laps, completely uncontested. Um, we'll go ahead and show you guys the rest of the video of that. There we are on the final lap, coming in for the finish. Like I said, completely uncontested. Um, if you'll notice, my lap times, last lap was a minute 50, best lap was a minute 49. If you were to average out most of my laps, they're a minute 49, minute 50, fairly slow uh, by qualifying standards. But maintaining that consistency through each and every lap definitely paid off. So then we'll look at my second race, where I finished second place. Uh, you'll notice a very similar set of circumstances where basically everybody just kind of goes off the road. There's a lot of bumping, a lot of sliding. So I have Started in 8th place and very easily squeaked into 5th place right out the gate. Just by avoiding accidents in the corners and being more focused on a clean race than uh, winning the race. So, you see a couple of good battles in here, getting placement. A uh, little bit of car clipping, I think right around this corner. Yep, right around that corner I take my 4th place and we see some crazy clips up there on the front. some back and forth battling with uh, this white and green MX-5 here. I will tell you guys, even if Miatas are the only thing you're driving for a little bit, uh, they are an absolute blast to race. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun just doing this. I've tried to step up. I did some open wheel. I did some uh, GT uh, Ultimately, I need some more practice. I've got to get some habits down, uh, particularly with trail braking and uh, timing my brakes in general. Before I want to go back into that, I think weekly I'll practice for and run an MX-5 race here and there. But that'll be about it. So here we are, ninth lap. I jumped ahead a bit. Coming into the tent. Mind you, just like in the other video, I'm 148.6 at a best and 150 for my last lap. So, again, saying minute and 50 seconds. These two get competitive. I slide right in. I've still got zero incidents. Um, made sure not to get bumped taking him in the corner here. fly up to this last corner. So, I did bump him. Um, I chose my race line. He chose his. I'll let you guys put in the comments who you think is at fault. I'm still kind of new to this. I'm sure some of you that have been racing more. Um, I do somewhat feel like it was my fault. I cut from behind him and went in for the take. But at the same time, he seemed to be... He was following the race line, um, but I don't think he was really following what I was doing. Like I said, um, I feel like I'm responsible for it but I feel like I needed to take the inside corner if I was going to take him. He looked like he was going wide. Uh, looks like he was just, in retrospect, following a proper race line for that corner. Uh, either way, I probably wouldn't have shot it if I thought for sure he was going to hit me. Bad decision on that. 
However, the end result was a second place. Uh, not sure if it's something that I should be proud of or not. I would have been happy with third, a back-to-back -back first and third podium. Would have been perfectly fine with me. Um, so anyways, that was just a little bit of my racing that I've done this week. Uh, I did record a few other things that I tried out. Ultimately, I don't want to have uh, virtual tomatoes and sodas thrown at me for how bad it looked. So we'll hold off. I'll get some practice. I'll stay out of the races that I'm not ready for for a little bit longer and get some practice in. Uh, if you guys are interested, one of the next videos I'm going to do and hopefully either this week or next week is I'm going to start the first video of a series I'm going to do on building a dash for my racing cockpit. Um, I want to go to the junkyard. I'm going to try to record the footage, go into the junkyard, making a selection. Uh, local junkyards have a, quite a few BMWs. I uh, happen to love my BMW, love BM German automobiles in general. Uh, so I want to use a BMW interior to do my center console to do my dash uh so that's currently my goal we'll see if i find something i like better when we go to the junkyard but i do want to film quite a bit of the process of selecting and building the dash so if that's something you guys are interested in uh make sure you subscribe to the channel uh give me some comments uh let me know what you think of the videos good bad ugly whatever whatever you guys have for me uh i want to be as helpful as i possibly can uh clearly i'm going to spend a little more time talking and explaining things than i have in the past i was really trying not to bore you guys but you'll either be bored or informed one of the two uh hopefully the latter but hit the subscribe button if you feel so inclined to do so if you're interested in what's coming next uh, I hope to move on to bigger, more interesting things. Uh, I know one of the things that was brought up is, uh, on Reddit is just learning how to use a simulator, learning how to drive, um, learning how to drive a stick shift on a simulator. That may be something that I look at doing, uh, maybe in the in-between of being able to have time to get to the junkyard while they're open. I do work during the day, so that is a bit of a challenge, um. Anyways, stay cool, stay safe, and continue to race.